and they're at uh, Heinz Field for Steelers practice. It is all happening all across the league. Well, Selva stayed put on the West Coast because he has to give us all the headlines that keep us all excited for football. Absolutely. Kay, I'm surprised though. You didn't know about the 900 from Tony Hawk. That's a big deal. No. That's a major I'm very athletic impressed. feat. No? Not feeling it? You're out there in California. It is. It is very impressive. I will we'll definitely. You definitely I know. Well, uh, here, I, I will say this. <laughs> hey, look at you knowing that skateboarding knowledge. I will say this. I interviewed Tony Hawk the night after he did it. So I didn't realize wow. how big it oh. was until that moment. Yes. So I was at the yeah. X Games watching all these bodies flying around with bikes. You're like, what is going on here? But it was an impressive feat, to say the least. Nice little humble brag mm. as I head into my news update, we everybody. See you, Will. As we know, <laughs> I see you guys as well. Uh, as we all know, it is very hard to repeat as Super Bowl champs. After all, the last team to do it was the Patriots mm. back in 2003 and 2004. This season, the Bucks are tasked with doing the same thing. Linebacker Shaq Barrett went one-on-one -on -one with Sarah Walsh and talked about how the team will try to put that success behind them, despite the fact that there's going to be a bunch of banners around Raymond James Stadium. So it's a pretty tough. I drive by it every day. <laughs> I look at them like, yeah, they got to take that down now. But I know they probably want to keep it up for a little bit. But uh it's just our coaches, they keep us focused. We keep ourselves focused because we know the goal this year is to uh, put the work in so that when game 17 rolls around, we're in position to be in the playoffs. And like a BA always say, you get hot at the right time, and that's the team who uh, usually win it. And as long as we get hot at the right time, we'll be in the same position to be able to do what we just did. Friend of the show, Shaq Barrett. Meanwhile, in Cincinnati, Joe Burrow has been cleared to fully participate in practice, but team owner Mike Brown telling reporters Monday the second-year QB probably won't play in any preseason games. Head coach Zach Taylor taking the cautious approach with Burrow. We'll still be smart as we deal with him throughout training camp, even though he is cleared. Uh, we're going to be smart. We want him to play in the first game against Minnesota. Um, so again, we'll be measured with our approach there, but, but glad to have him able to do whatever he can do. And some bittersweet news for the Patriots. The team announcing longtime cheerleader, director Tracy Sormanti will be posthumously inducted into the team's Hall of Fame. Sormanti passing away from cancer back in December. She was with the franchise for 32 seasons. Sormanti will be the first woman to be inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame. Joining her in the induction will also be a former defensive tackle Richard Seymour, who was with the Patriots for eight seasons. And can guys, of course, he was part of three of their Super Bowl winning teams. Also coming up short in his quest to make it into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So mm -hmm. either way, Richard Seymour there and also Tracy Sormanti as well inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame. Cannot write the history of the Patriots without those two names. Thank you so much, Will Selva, for the update there all around. Let's talk about improvement, bouncing back, getting better. Cynthia Freeland, she made her predictions for the most improved players in 2021 for every AFC team. It's it's a hodgepodge. It's a potpourri of names here, everybody. With training camps officially underway today, all of these players are going to look to get better. Every player does, and they'll try to do it this season. Guys, which player from this list, Cynthia's list over at NFL.com, should we be talking about more heading into training camp? Gashon, let's be honest, some of these names on this list we do not talk about enough. Yeah, certainly not. We And, and I'll add, uh, I'll throw Justin Herbert out on that. And, and it's shocking, actually, that he's on this list for most approved because – I mean, okay. See what he did as a rookie? Like that's pretty scary if he's going to improve on that. 31 touchdowns. Um, you know, I think only Andrew Luck threw more yards than him as a rookie quarterback. So I, I mean I was so impressed with, with Herbert, not just what he did on the field, but how he handled the, the being being the leader, how he handled, you know, the way that with which he was interjected. I mean, look, you find out like 15 minutes before game time, hey kid, you're up. Tyrod's out. Something happened with, with, you know, from a medical standpoint. You got to go play, and he went out and balled out. So, are you expecting another leap, like a big leap? I, no. I mean, I'm expecting him to improve on that, but I think, like, if it is a big leap, like, man, we could be talking about MVP. I'm staying in the division. I'm going with Jerry Judy in his sophomore season. He had a game in Week 15 where he had five drops, five. 
The next game, final game of the regular season, he goes out and has five catches for 140 yards. And the coaches I've talked to said that's where the switch happened <laughs> leading into this offseason, that he has been a madman in terms of his training. Nate, the way he runs routes, there was a podcast with Richard Sherman and Xavier and Howard. Uh -huh. Howard said he put me spinning around on a slant, and I've never been spun around on a slant. I went back and watched the film. He did this hop step. They said his first step is absolutely crazy, comparing his route running, the two of them, to Devontae Adams. Mm. That's very high praise for a guy going into his second season. With blazing speed. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I'll go with another wide receiver, LaVisca Chenault with the Jags. Uh, you know, he's one of those individuals that when you get the ball in his hands, he can do damage. It's what he did in college, but he's dealt with some injuries, though, and, yep. and dealt with some inconsistency. We even had him on the show, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, I just felt like my lights were a little dim. You know, I felt like I, I was running on lower power because I wasn't myself. He said, but right now, my lights are bright. I'm good to go. I know the playbook and I'm healthy. He is ready to rock and roll. He was so confident. And this is after me hearing reports that down in uh, Jacksonville, he is absolutely lighting things up. Yeah. So for him to come on this show and say, just wait till I show you what I got this year with the quarterback who is going to lean on his playmakers. Look out for LaVishka. He's going to do big things. Had 600 yards, 60 catches last year. Mm -hmm. You know, played a little bit more than half the season. But this year, he's going to be a big I love that next young wide linebacker. receiving group down big there in big, Jacksonville. Doesn't LaVishka like sound like a verb? Like, I, mean, I don't know. I can't like, hear anything yeah, at this point. Yeah, what did you say? LaVishka. LaVishka. It sounds like a verb. Uh, I'll mention Grant Delpit a little bit. His junior year at LSU, we're talking game-changing talent. He was the second rounder for the Browns. Their biggest weakness is secondary. Let's not forget before Patrick Mahomes got injured, they were allowing like 500 yards through the air to Patrick Mahomes and company in the playoffs. So I think if he is healthy, and he hasn't been, it's probably why he went in the second round. He's a first-round talent, uh, if not for that injury. Coming off an Achilles tear, if he can get it done, I'd really think he can be an X factor to sort of make this a really